Hey, welcome to my channel. And today what we have before us is a Well McLean model LGB series two boiler. And it's marked as an LGB five or five section. And it's um, pretty good input. Uh, and what we have here is, I think you can tell by the damage to the um, schematic and wiring diagram that the boiler uh, dry fired. Um, there's the old um, uh, serial number, it looks like a shrinky dink. <laughs> um, we've, we're in the process of um, demoing it, and I wanted to uh, share with you why the unit failed. Um, the main problem with the LGB is that you must use the float type controls. There is no provision or tapping to use the uh, electronic uh, low water cutoffs. Now you have you're supposed to have on certain sizes of these boilers uh, two low water cutoffs. You have your operating uh, low water cutoff and water feed. This is a model number 61, McDonald Miller. Uh, they've installed the uh, cross T's, which is good. Uh, there's the number 11 switch that's very similar to the one that's in the McDonald Miller number 67. And there's the return, and I think you can see the problem. Uh, they have uh, plugged the bottom tapping and what there should be is a drain there so that the unit can um, be tested and the any sludge that builds up and keeps the float from operating properly can be removed. Well, it couldn't do that. Eventually, this rusted up, froze the float in place. So as the water level dropped, it uh, didn't shut off the burner. And of course, it didn't uh, allow the boiler to feed and add water. So this unit was locked out. And what then should happen is the secondary low water cutoff, which is the, this is a particular uh, float, uh, uh, excuse me, a 63 McDonald Miller. And there is your cutout level. As you can see that the cutout level here and here are properly installed as far as we can tell but again no way of draining uh, the system let me get you a shot inside of there just for and this is the return this is where the water was returning now with um, the manual control they use um, these float controls usually use a, a number 2M switch. It sits on top. Um, this is attached to the float by a bellows and a, a lever mechanism. You see the bellows there. And when the float drops, it pushes this in the up position, which then pushes on the bottom of this switch, this uh, brass tab there, and will uh, attaches to a micro switch. Let me see if I can get this apart. There we go. So there's the micro switch. Then you have your common, normally closed and normally open terminals. Um, and this is the mechanism that allows the unit to, uh, the, in normal operation, the float to drop and trigger uh, this. And But that little tab there keeps it, where is it, keeps it from resetting. And so what you're supposed to do is if the, if this is in the down position, you should be able to reset and you push this lever. This is all you see on the outside, it's not much. You push the lever and you can see that it's spring loaded and the little cam there, yeah, that's pretty clever, isn't it? Got to admit that. And let me see if I can get a shot. There. Now it's ready to fire. And I'll push on the, with my thumb, I'm going to simulate a low water condition. And you'll see that trip and then not be allowed to reset. And then you reset it like that. So that's pretty clever. There's not much to it. A lot of times you'll get a no heat call because somebody has um, run the boiler, excuse me, has drained 
the flow while the boiler wasn't running, which is very often what people do, and they don't push the reset button and the unit doesn't fire and there's a, and there's a no heat call. So keep an eye out for that. And again, I'm not a big fan of these flow controls for the reason that, that they do require weekly testing while the boiler is running during the heating season. So stay safe. Remember um, to uh, check that. And uh, if you have any situation like that, you got to remember to add drains, uh, full port drains. See you on the next one. Take care and stay safe out there.